Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast, and I am so stoked to be with you today for something that Magic has never done before with a very special guest to talk all about it. Welcome to the show, YouTube and music phenomenon, Jonathan Young. How's it going, man? Hello, Gavin. I'm so happy to be here. This is such a great honor and, and, uh, and privilege to be able to, uh, you know, I've been a fan of this show for a long time. I'm a huge, huge Magic player. Um, and I, in a way, I'm more nervous about this than I am about singing in front of two million people every week. <laughs> but uh, I'm so happy to be here. And this project has been a dream come true. Uh, we have such an incredible team of musicians um, that work together to make some music themed around this amazing Kamigawa set. Uh, and I, I'm so excited, man. It's, it's great. Yeah, and I'm so excited to talk about the album today. If you haven't heard, Jonathan and many other great artists are dropping an album all around Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. We're gonna get into that. But right before we do, Jonathan, I wanna know what your background with magic is like. Like, how did you get into this? And obviously you found a career as a musician and doing a bunch of stuff on YouTube, but like, you've been playing magic for a long time. What's kind of the story here? Yeah, so uh, I've actually been a magic player longer than I've been a, prof a professional musician. Um, I, I dropped out of a music school in 2013 and I was, uh, living with my parents trying to become a professional musician and my former classmate at that music school, Dylan, uh, shout out to, uh, my, my boy Dylan is responsible for this. Uh, Dylan dragged me to an LGS and convinced me to split a Theros box with him in 2013. And the first pack that I opened was a foil thought cease. Woo! Not a bad first booster. <laughs> and, and I oh, and even back then it was like this, you know, jund staple and and uh and I opened the pack and I was like, oh, it's it's thought season, it's shiny, and and Dylan was really upset at me. <laughs> and and he looked at me, he's like, John, we could almost get another box if you trade that in right now. And um and that was it. And I've I've pl been playing uh semi competitive modern jund ever since. Uh <laughs> I haven't uh haven't changed too much since that first pack when I opened the thought seas. And uh I play a ton of uh, commander. I uh I collect, I own about 50 uh, commander decks of different levels of competitiveness and tunedness. Um, and in addition to Commander and Modern being my big formats, I love Pioneer. I've dabbled in Popper uh, and I've hit Mythic Rank 1 uh, on Arena Constructed as well. And I, 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 man, I think I'm in the middle of a Kamigawa draft uh, on Arena that I have to finish right now. <laughs> You're probably the only musician in the world who has hit number one on arena and is as big as you are. So that is pretty freaking <laughs> impressive. What an amazing run to get here. I mean, thank you. You know, I think, you. I think a lot of people out there are probably like, oh, uh, there's an album coming out. Maybe Wizard just grab some random artist who's interested, who doesn't know magic that well to come in and work on it. And you're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I, I brought a couple of my decks here that I, I might show off if we have time later, just because I, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to be here, Gavin. I'm, I'm so, so humbled to be here. I'm, uh, and uh, yeah, and I'm so, so glad that Wizards put the trust in in these musicians and, and took this big step into releasing some music for the, the rich lore and community of this beautiful game. So, you know, one thing we've talked about Wizards for a really long time is what is the sound of magic, right? Because magic is a card game. It, there isn't any extra sound effects. There's no music, there's nothing. It's just, you know, maybe a thwacking of cards or, or you know, Brian Kibler like shuffling his cards too fast in his hand or, or something like that is about the extent of what you get. That, that's so, a beautiful sound though. That's a beautiful sound. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. You got to love walking through the tournament halls and hearing that, but th there's no sound. And so to come in and work on this project, you got to kind of create a sound for magic, which is super cool. I want to hear about how this started. So how did you even get hooked up to do this kind of thing? And like, what's the story there? Yeah. So, um, I made a sponsored metal song for Kaldheim with the Magic Europe team uh, because I taught a good friend of mine and, and another amazing singer, Pelike. I taught him how to play Magic and then he got approached by uh, Magic's European branch a couple weeks after I taught him how to play to make a, a sponsored 
uh, Magic the Gathering song, and he told them, he was like, I would love to do this, but I'm not doing it unless you let me pull Jonathan Young in because he taught me how to play. So uh, Pelike gave me the hookup, and we had so much fun uh, making the Keldheim song. Uh, and there's so many uh, amazing things happening in the music world right now on the internet uh, with all of these independent artists making all of these songs inspired by things like Dungeons and Dragons and, and Magic the Gathering and all of these other lore inspired songs that are really blossoming on the internet and a lot of the mainstream music and marketing industries uh, that's kind of under their radar. So I started to get this idea that it would be amazing if there was there was official uh, music because I'm, I'm seeing all of these fans making unofficial songs that are often blowing up. You know, unofficial D&D songs, unofficial Magic the Gathering songs uh, are, you know, getting millions and millions of, of views and plays on the internet. And why not make it official? Why not hire some of those same people um, and make it real? You know, so I, I remember I, I mentioned this idea to you after you heard the Kaldheim song and we were jamming some games of Commander um, and the idea kind of bounced around for a little bit at Wizards uh, and I kept kind of being like, hey, can I please, can I please assemble a team of musicians to do this for you? And finally, uh, here we are. Um, and I'm so happy that it happened. Yeah, what a journey to get here. And I'm glad we played those early Commander games or some of these ideas were born. And uh, he alluded to them earlier. His Commander decks are brutal. So yeah, you do not want to mess around playing against, uh, <laughs> against Jonathan here. All right, let's get into the album. So day day one, you're told you're going to do this. You're greenlit. How do you even start? Like, what is what is your process? Like, where do you come up with the ideas from? Do you start by you know, divvying up the songs or figuring out what kind of plot points you want to hit or kind of figuring out the themes of the album. How does that even go? So um, I I was thinking about this a lot and it's kind of hard to explain without using a bunch of, of music terminology. So um, to kind of break it down, I guess, um, making a song is actually a lot more of a accessible concept than you would think. And since we're on Good Morning Magic, uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to kind of compare it to deck building. The, the synergies and the mechanics of Magic the Gathering that you have to uh, kind of familiarize yourself with in order to build a good deck uh, is, is really, really similar to making music in different styles. For example, if I asked you to build an aggro deck just using Kamigawa Neon Dynasty cards. Y you probably immediately have ideas in your head of what cards you would use, what what your your auto includes would be, what your flex slots would be, uh, what your sixty card deck might look like, and what what mechanics you would build it around. Uh, or in contrast, if I asked you to make a control deck using only original Kamigawa block cards. You probably, your head immediately goes back to what were those draft archetypes? What were the, the synergies between those colors? And music is very similar. Music is all about mechanics interacting with each other that have certain rules. So mus music is usually based off of scales and um, that's a mechanic. Those are specific uh, that, that's a specific framework of rules that you're building your song around and knowing which of those notes to put in which position are, um, are very important. So in a major scale, you really want to hear that last note, right? And that's, that's kind of built into your, into your brain. That's just the, the physics that I'm not going to unpack, but because of that mechanic, you can take a, a chord and you can build a chord progression around certain mechanics of the game, so to speak, in terms of music. And um, so if you kind of extrapolate on those rules and you get better at the deck building of, of making a song, uh, you, you get to this point where you can examine uh, you know, what notes do I want to make a sad song? You know, what notes do I want to use to make a song that sounds uh, like this or like that? So obviously Kamigawa is, um, 
is built on uh, these themes of Japanese folklore. And there are actually scales and chords that are um, signposts of uh, Japanese music. That's why, like, in certain movie soundtracks or video game soundtracks, you'll hear a song and sound and say, like, oh, that sounds like an, like a, um, a Japanese or Asian song. Uh, you'll hear a song and say, hmm, that sounds like Celtic or Germanic. And you'll hear a song and, and um, like, one, one common example is the harmonic uh, minor scale. Like, that sounds, it sounds like Middle Eastern music. Uh, so there's, if you know those things and you know those framework, like uh, many of the incredible, incredible musicians that we hired, like uh, Insane in the Rain music, Carlos uh, is a jazz composer who knows all about all of this music theory stuff, as well as Zach and Tomoko, who were a, a big part of this project, uh, are probably some of the foremost experts in the country about uh, what notes you can use that will be uh, accurate to um, Japanese influenced music. Just like, you know, giving yourself the challenge of, I want to build a control deck, I want to build an aggro deck. Uh, you can also give yourself the challenge of, I want to make a song that sounds like it was influenced by this style of music. And I, you know, uh, from there, it's just picking the right cards, you know, picking the right cards to put in your deck. If you use a, a very specific set of notes, uh, you know, that kind of feels sad. And that kind of feels sad, but a little bit quizzical, you know? And then this feels kind of happy, and that feels kind of wistfully happy. There's all these different things that you can do. If you know the mechanics, you can just slot in all of these different cards into your deck to accomplish a different, a different thing. So I feel like in the past few minutes, I have learned more than any of my music classes ever taught me. <laughs> this is amazing. There That's is so cool. There is a big disconnect in music education right now where the way that many people are being taught music is not in an accessible way like that that makes sense when you explain it. Once you think about it that way, the, the idea of making a song that sounds like a specific character or a specific place uh, becomes a lot less daunting. If more people would explain things to me in terms of magic deck building, that would also be very <laughs> helpful. <laughs> That's a framework I understand pretty well, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, well that, so, okay, so I love hearing about all the mechanics of it. So you kind of got, it sounds like you got the idea of some of the people you wanted to include based on what they were known for and what they were good at in terms of these mechanics. Is that about right? Yes. So we had, uh, we had kind of two types of musicians that we were looking for with this project. Uh, we had... Um, what I'll, I'll reductively call music producers who are going to be the people that are writing the songs and producing the songs, uh, which is a lot to unpack there, but we'll call them music producers. Um, so, uh, people like insane in the rain, uh, genuine, uh, Zach and Tomoko, Trey, Amy, those are our music producers and, and writers, and they're deciding which of these mechanics they're going to use to paint a certain picture with a certain color scheme. Um, and then we also had um, performers, which we were bringing on, uh, which is kind of two different aspects of making music is, is the assembling the building blocks and uh, executing those building blocks, just like how you can build a deck, but piloting it is uh, different. Uh, so we have singers on the album like Caleb, Michelle, Oreo. Uh, Oreo also dipped her toes into into writing, uh, writing and producing her song as well. Um, music is a very multifaceted thing, and and um, but we knew that we were going to need people to do the back end, the deck building, and we knew that we were going to need people to to pilot those decks. So, um, so we, we had kind of people that we were looking at for, for both of those. And, um, it's such a, such an, a talented and incredible team that we got to work with on this project. So, and so when it comes to the artist picking the subject matter for their song, did you kind of assign artists certain kinds of songs? Like, Hey, you're going to do something like this. You're going to do something like this, or are you more like, Hey, here's the world. Here's some characters, here's some plot points. 
you make something cool out of this. Like, how did that kind of process go about? For this project, it was pretty open-ended. Um, Magic knew that they wanted to focus on the this sort of futuristic electronic feel for these songs, uh, because obviously the whole theme of Kamigawa is is this time jump into the the, the cyberpunk futuristic theme. Uh, so we really wanted to focus on that. Uh, we wanted to make sure that it sounded futuristic uh, to, to fit um, the Neon Dynasty part of of Kamigawa. And other than that, we had kind of a little bundle of like very large scale concepts. Like uh, we sent people uh, some of the story beats about um, uh, Kaito and the Wanderer uh, and Tamiyo. Uh, we had like, you know, characters and places and art. And we kind of told a bunch of these musicians like, hey, here's all this art. Here are some of these ideas. And just run with it and let's see what happens. And it turned out so beautiful to see each individual's vision of what they took from that. Because if you're doing a soundtrack for a movie, the directors of the movie will have a very, very specific, like, you need to make a song about this exact moment of the movie and this is happening and we want it to sound exactly like this song. But we kind of just let these independent musicians run and for example, Amy Waters, one of the producers on this project who made the song Shadow of Boseju, um, she made this incredible song and we didn't hear it until it was almost done. So we, we were like, oh man, I wonder how this is going to turn out. And it turns out Amy is a huge Magic fan. So we didn't tell her anything about what to make the song about. And she came to us and said, this is my song. I want to call it Shadow of Boseju. I wrote it about the Boseju cards and it was incredible. It was amazing. And it and it can be scary to 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 let artists run with uh, with especially something as cherished as Magic the Gathering lore. Uh, and it turned out so well. It paid off so well to to let Amy and Carlos and all of these people just take uh, take these ideas and just create their own art. Carlos is another amazing example on this album uh, of that. Like he he he. Um, if you watch Carlos's music video for his song Neon Riverside, uh, which should be out already, um, he has closed captions on the video that explain what he was envisioning during each part of the song. He has like, now there's a fisherman that's that's going out into the river outside of the city and the river is starting to get, you know, tumultuous and, and the neon lights from the city are shining down on the river and you can see it. You can see it while you're listening and it's it's incredible. It's Amazing. Yeah, I mean, I've listened to the album a few times now. Spoilers, I think it's amazing. I cannot wait for all of you to, to go listen to it. Go check it out. And one remarkable thing about those two songs, which you kind of alluded to there, is Shadow of Boseju and Neon Riverside are both instrumental only. There's no lyrics in those songs. And to get, paint those pictures, either with, you know, uh, captions in the video or with just, hey, it's a story of Boseju. I'm going to tell that story through music is so cool to me. And it's the kind of thing that you wouldn't get if it was like very prescribed, right? I don't think me or anybody at Wizards would ever say, Boseju, we want a song about Boseju, but here we are. And, and it totally happened, which is so cool. So we talked about two of those songs now, now Neon Riverside and Shadow of Boseju. Let's just quickly go through all the songs on the album and just say a, a quick bit about each of them and kind of what to expect. Yeah. So we've got Light It Up, the first track. This is kind of like the theme song. Uh, it's just a hype. It, it's a banger. It's a big pop song. We've got Caleb Hiles, a very dear friend of mine, uh, singing, singing like a pop star uh, on this track, and it's super, super catchy just to get you in the mood to just win some games of magic. We have The Future is Bright, which uh, was made by one of the other lead electronic music producers on this project, Genuine. Um, and uh, he came to us already at the beginning of the project with um, some sort of sketches of ideas that he had. And then 
uh, we gave him these ideas for Kamigawa and he, he molded these songs uh, it, it to, across the finish line um, with the inspiration that we gave him for Kamigawa. And we also have Zach Zinger, uh, one of the many tracks that he's involved in, uh, playing the Shakuhachi, which is a Japanese folk instrument. Uh, both of them together, uh, Genuine's amazing electronic music production and Zach's intimate knowledge of Japanese folk music is an incredible pairing. Track three, we've got one with Phyrexia, which is kind of my passion project on this album. I, um, th th this song breaks my heart. I listen to it so many times, and oh, I, I get chills every time I hear this song. You did an amazing you. job on it. Thank you. Yeah. As as soon, um, quick anecdote. I, I know we have to get through a long list of songs here, but I'm I play a lot of Saltai Planeswalker tribal decks in competitive sixty card formats, and uh, for the longest time, I was always you know waiting. For for Simic and Demir Planeswalkers to come out, and um, and I lost my boy Oko. Nobody believed me when Oko was spoiled, and I said it was going to be the best card ever printed. Nobody believed me, and now he's gone. But but thankfully, we have Tamio now. And as soon as I saw that card, as soon as I realized that uh, she became completed by the Phyrexians, I knew that's what I want to write a song about because. Uh, my own music career, I'm known for my 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 deep, spooky, low voice, uh, and I thought that that would be a, a, a perfect fit uh, to make sort of a this dark uh, song about that very dark part of the story. It, it feels that, that that song to me feels like if Phantom of the Opera was about magic. That's what that song would be. That's exactly what I was going for. That's exactly what I was going for. So I'm I'm glad that you picked up on that. We've got the Neon Riverside, which I already uh, talked about. Carlos did an amazing job also with Z uh, Zach Zinger. Um, beautiful, beautiful uh, instrumental piece uh, takes you through a long journey uh, through the, the setting of Kamigawa. I, I, I don't even, I don't have any words for this one. Carlos is absolutely incredible at what he does. Uh, and Zach Singer obviously brought amazing Japanese folk influences to the song as well. Uh, Matt Heafy uh, is the frontman of one of the most successful metal bands in history called Trivium. And uh, he is, uh, much of his music with his band is inspired by Japanese folklore and Japanese music as well. Um, so bringing Matt on this project to write a bunch of these songs, uh, the first of which being Toscate on this album, is uh, amazing. Uh, Toscate translates to Rescue Me. Uh, and it's just this gritty, tense, electronic anthem uh, that really puts you into the, into the setting of Kamigawa. Um, I know a lot of the, the team members at Wizards have really been loving this song. Uh, we have another genuine song uh, with Zach and Tomoko, uh, Lost Aura. Um, uh, genuine said that he was he was thinking about um, like lost love and and memories 
when he was writing this beat. Uh, and uh, genuine, um, we were kind of talking about how can we how can we tie that into magic? And I immediately thought about auras and enchantments and sort of this idea of uh, what if we called the song Lost Aura and it kind of makes you picture this enchantment in, in up in the mountains or in a forest somewhere that, that's, uh, that's missing and it's kind of this bittersweet song, uh, but it still feels magical. got Dearest Friend, which is a song that I wrote and Matthew Heafy sang about Kaito and uh, his search for the Wanderer. Um, I love writing focused storytelling songs like this. Uh, it's always a super, super fun challenge to try and take um, an actual story beat and put it to music similar to like a Broadway musical. Um, and. Uh, and it was super fun to write, uh, lots of fun stuff that, that uh, Hefe and I did on this song. Searching for the stranger who carried her away His dearest friend is filled with his regret For the day that Kaito lost the emperor Will it be the sun in the heart of desert? Shout out of Boseju, which we talked about already. Amy did an incredible, incredible job and is such a huge Magic fan. And uh, very, very, she is very, very happy that she got to do this. This is, uh, she's so, so excited about this song and it's absolutely incredible. Definitely smash hit. Uh, shout out of Boseju. Um, That's been my, my working song for the past yeah. couple days, by the way. I've like had it on in the background while I'm like making magic cards. It feels like it's so wild to make magic cards to a magic themed album. Yeah, you know? I just like th this song just makes me want to like dim the lights and just like take a nap, you know, just like chill, you know, perhaps in the shadow of Boseju. Yeah, yeah. Next up, we've got uh, The Spark Inside. This is another incredible song that uh, that Matthew Heafy wrote that I produced. Um, it's got kind of that, that imagery of a planeswalker spark. And We Glow uh, is a another amazing beat that Genuine worked on. Uh, Genuine is an expert of, of this kind of modern, futuristic sounding electronic dance music. Uh, so what he did on this album to, to bring the, the neon into Kamigawa uh, was incredible. He's, he's such a, such a talented producer. <laughs> got Neon Streets. Uh, this song almost got cut from the album and I'm so glad that it didn't. Uh, I wrote this song um, kind of just about the feeling of reconnecting with your friends and revisiting old memories, which kind of feels like 
coming back to Kamigawa uh, for many of these fans. And we were able to get Matthew Heafy's younger sister, Michelle, who's also an incredible musician,、uh, to sing on this song. And she did an amazing, amazing job. But,、um, I mean, I was going to ask, it's one of my favorites on the album. I don't almost get cut just like for space or didn't have a singer. What was the reason? We didn't have a singer and we didn't have a direction for the song. We, we had the idea of.、Uh, Like, I had the, the lyrics and the melody and the chords written, and I kind of had a little bit of a beat. And nobody was really attached to the song yet. Nobody really had any plans for the song yet.、Uh, so the choice was looking like it was going to become either I have to sing it myself, and I don't feel like it's a good fit for my voice.、Um, It's a brighter song. It's an optimistic, nostalgic song. And I, I have a very deep and spooky voice.、Um, so I, I was either going to have to figure out a way to make it work myself, or we were going to have to cut it. And I mentioned it to, to、uh, Matt Heafy, and he was like, let's get my sister to do it. Next on the album, we have Argon Reflection,、uh, which is by a good friend of mine,、uh, Trey Watson.、Uh, Trey is also a huge fan of Matthew Heafy, so we got to make some dreams come true by、uh, letting Trey and Matthew work together、uh, on this song.、Uh, Argon is the element on the periodic table that is used to create neon lights, and we didn't know that until Trey sent us the song with the song title. And when they sent us the song, it was like, wow. Trey just outsmarted all of us. <laughs> This is such a good song title.、Uh, and obviously, the song is a banger. It's amazing. Next, we have Lands of Kamigawa. This is、uh, probably my favorite of the tracks that Genuine and Zach worked on. Genuine took this song idea, and as soon as we sent Genuine the art from the set, he immediately said, I'm making a song about the full art basic lands. He immediately was like, I'm going to make this song inspired by all of these, like taking you through all these different. Uh, beautiful, beautiful full art basic. Uh, uh, he mentioned, he kept mentioning the island one, blue players, am I right? But, <laughs>、uh, but he was very, very inspired by the art, the beautiful, beautiful art with,、um, uh, with the Japanese text to make this particular song. And it turned out so, so good.、Um, and so, yeah, we decided on the title Lands of Kamigawa. And、uh, you can listen to that song and have your, your framed full art basics up on the wall. and And,、uh, and everything will sync up. <laughs> Last two tracks on the album.、Uh, we have、uh, Path to Victory by Oreo, Genuine, and then featuring Tomoko and Zach.、Uh, absolute supergroup of a song.、Uh, Oreo made this incredibly, incredibly upbeat, vibrant, and, and、uh, really, really hype song about chasing your dreams and, and conquering the world with your friends. And,、uh, You know, you can't, you can't forget about the gathering in Magic the Gathering. So, <laughs>、uh, this song turned out amazing. Super, super catchy.
last but not least, uh, the last song that uh, Matthew Heafy and I tag team together on this project is Mechanical. And um, we were getting to the end of the project about the last week before we had to start uh, finishing up the music. I was looking at our track list and I got to do a preview card and I didn't know what my preview card was until the album was almost finished. And the preview card that I did was Mech Hanger. And prior to getting that preview card, I didn't know that there were big mechs in the set. So I saw my preview card and I'm like, oh my God, we need to have a song about mechs on the album. And um, originally I was gonna make kind of a lighthearted song uh, about suiting up in a mech and, you know, going to fight with the mech. Uh, and I, I started working on it with Hefe and it, it, it turned into more of this like sort of mech movie soundtrack song uh, which turned out to be like super big industrial you can kind of picture the mech stomping <laughs> as you're listening to the song as it's you know m moving out to defend the city gates um, and yeah man this this album is uh, an incredible journey and I'm I'm so so happy and privileged to have been a part of it I love that every song has a story, right? It's not like, oh yeah, we just found it. We needed a song, so we just made one up or something for, you know, just out of, out of no reason. It's like, no, everything is very deliberate. There's a choice behind everything. You had a card that inspired you or an art piece that inspired you. And that is so cool. I mean, it really does feel like a love letter to Kamigawa, right? It's just, it is truly something for this world and, and of this world. And I hope if you go to, I don't know, a nightclub in Neon Kamigawa, you would hear these songs playing, right? Yeah, um, yeah. It's incredible. I'm so happy to have, have been a part of this. It's hu absolutely humbling. And uh, I can't thank Wizards uh, and Magic the Gathering enough for trusting us musicians to, to, to make that love letter, you know? So we've run through all the songs, we've played a few clips for you, but if I want this album, where do I get it at? How do I go check it out? So if you want to listen to the Kamigawa Neon Dynasty official soundtrack, it's available right now on your favorite music platforms. Just the same way that you listen to all of your other favorite music, go on your favorite app on your phone or on your computer or your device and just search for Kamigawa and you should be able to find it. Uh, the music also supports the independent artists uh, that were involved in this album. If you buy the album, if you stream the album, uh, the proceeds from that music goes to supporting the independent musicians that made the music, which is, I can't understate how incredible that is that Wizards of the Coast uh, set it up that way. Um, so check it out. Link in the description. There definitely will be a link down below so you all can go check that out. And I hope that at your local game store release events or anything else that might be happening magic-wise in your area, you get friends together to do a draft. Just, just put it on the background. It'll enhance your draft. It's like uh, in D&D, you play music right, to kind of set the scene. This will set the scene for your Kamigawa draft. It's a really, really fun time. So now, bef before we go, Jonathan, you did mention earlier you had a couple commander decks by your side. You want to pick one to and tell the audience about it? Well, I thought it was fitting. I thought it was fitting to uh, to show this deck because I know that you designed this card and I've also beaten you with it several times. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and since it's Kamigawa, uh, I have this Yuriko deck, which I, uh, I yeah. uh, which uh, is the, my camera isn't going to focus on it very well. But uh, you all you all know Yuriko. Uh, I'm incredibly excited about all of the new ninjas in this set to put into my Yuriko deck so that I can beat Gavin even harder next time that he regrets making there not be any commander tax on the ninjutsu cost. <laughs> yep, yep. There, I was literally, uh, some of you guys might have seen my five cards I regret video. Yep. And uh, th that video was impartially spawned by me playing as Jonathan, him <laughs> Yurikoing me, and then me having to tell the story about how deeply I regret the decision of there being no commander tax on that card. So uh, yeah, so thank is, goodness for spell table, I guess. Yeah, this is the deck that I pull out when Gavin beats me and I get angry. <laughs> so uh, I... I 
uh, almost always have Yurko out uh, attacking on turn two and uh, usually hitting a, you know, a 10 drop dig through time or something off the top and draining everybody at the table for 10. And uh, it's amazing. Uh, this is this is this is the deck that I pull out when I mean business. Oh, man. Well, this has been an absolute blast. I know we, we could literally sit here and talk for another hour we about magic and all things music. <laughs> I know deck building is like both of those. I want to hear the theory of commander music deck building. I'm sure that's out there somewhere. Yes. But 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 maybe if you all out there enjoyed this episode, you can let us know in the comments down below and maybe we will bring Jonathan back for a deck tech or, or who knows what else more music theory i don't know i can do a song exploder impersonation whatever i gotta do all right i will uh i will ask you right now jonathan any final words before we uh, jet for the day i would just love to thank wizards uh for letting us do this this project has been a dream come true and uh i hope that we see more stuff like this in the future because uh i think i can i think i can speak for the for the listeners when i say that uh like you said they want to be able to turn on the kamigawa music uh, and jam out while they're drafting, while they're playing commander. Uh, and why not give the people what they want? You know, um, I'm, I'm so happy. I, my heart, my heart is full and, uh, thank you so much for having me on your iconic good morning magic show. It has been an honor. Who knows? Maybe by the time we get to streets of New Capanna, we'll have some nice, uh, in theme world music for you again, if this goes well. So please go listen to the album, check it out. I think Jonathan and everyone else did a truly phenomenal, phenomenal job on it. Well, thank you, Jonathan, both for helping make this album and for coming on the show today. You can go check out the Kamigawa Neon Dynasty official soundtrack right now and hear all about it. In the meantime, though, I will talk with you again soon. And until then, have fun with the soundtrack. You got this. Flavorfully uh, connected back to original Kamigawa in a way we just didn't have access to in other cards. So we wanted them. Uh, but they needed to become creatures because uh, sagas just staying on the battlefield don't do a whole lot after they're done. And we wanted to keep the enchantment creature count up. Uh, we'll get to that in a second with them being enchantment creatures as well as another uh, issue that came up. But.